For our last show of season 12, we're taking you to the small town of Pontiac, Illinois. Situated on Route 66, the city is named after a Native American chief and not the automobile, but it still plays home to the Pontiac Oakland Automobile Museum. The city is also home to several wall dog murals and the only wall dog mural museum. Other points of interest include art cars, a Route 66 museum, Livingston County War Museum, and more. We'll tell you all about it next, so stay tuned. Heartland Highways is made possible in part by EIU's Academy of Lifelong Learning, providing all community members an outlet for their educational, social, and creative pursuits. Opportunities to learn new skills, engage in topics of interest, and explore new areas of learning. Available for people of all ages. More information available at 581-5114. Well, we've made it to the end of season 12, and we're wrapping up this season with a show all about the small town of Pontiac, Illinois. Situated on Route 66, the city is named after a Native American chief and not the automobile, but it still plays home to the Pontiac Oakland Automobile Museum. The city is also home to several wall dog murals and the only wall dog mural museum. Here's a closer look. In a short stretch of a long road, you'll find a place where three paths of the same road merge. Route 66 has changed, but one thing's for sure, it always runs through Pontiac, Illinois. There are three paths of Route 66 through Pontiac. Out you know, from this location here, Main Street, out here just east of us, was one of the original paths through Pontiac. Go out here to the Ladd Street, which is on the west side of the tracks, is the second path, and that was the long, well, not, not the longest stand anymore, because it was replaced in 48, but it was 66 at that time. And then another half a mile further west is what we call New 66. And that was put in, uh, first two lanes were put in in 1948, and then the second two lanes were put in in 1955. But that, that was the three paths through Pontiac. Pontiac history dates back long before Route 66, of course. Highlights include the construction of the courthouse in 1875, ties to Abraham Lincoln, and how the city got its name, which isn't automotive related as one might think. Chief Pontiac is, is what ties everything together here. Uh, our city was named after the famous Indian Chief Pontiac. The car was named after the Indian Chief, Chief Pontiac. The uh, chief was known to be a very strong uh, leader uh, among all the Indian tribes back in 1740, roughly. And he, uh, he was able to get the, all the various tribes together uh, to uh, coordinate a, a, an, a, an assault effort uh, back in the 1740s roughly, when there was no internet, <laughs> there was no radio, there was no form of media. So be because he was known for such strength and such uh, power, uh, the Pontiac was named after him. But the Pontiac automobile wasn't manufactured in Pontiac, Illinois, but Pontiac, Michigan. But that doesn't mean there isn't a connection between the town and the car. That can be found in one of the four museums housed in the city. We'll have more on that in a minute, but first, a little more about the town, which was widely known for shoe manufacturing for much of its history. Pontiac is a, a, a smaller community. We have about uh, 12,000 residents here, and we are located on Route 66. And Ru Route 66 is probably the main driving force of our tourism, or at least it started out to be that way when we opened the Route 66 Museum in uh, 2004. Since then, we've uh, grown into four different museums, and uh, the most recent one was the Pontiac Oakland Car Museum, and that opened two years ago. So now we have a perfect blend of the Route 66 and the cars, and people like to drive their cars on Route 66, so now it's kind of a great uh, melding of all of the uh, favorite things people like to do. Museums include the Pontiac Oakland Automobile Museum and Resource Center, 
the Livingston County War Museum, the International Wall Dog Mural and Sign Art Museum, and one more. The Route 66 Association Illinois Hall of Fame Museum, which started it all. Well, the first museum, the Route 66 Museum, was actually a brainchild of Betty Estes, the former director. She had read an article that there was a small exhibit in uh, McLean, Illinois, and that they, there was a new ownership or something was happening there. So she thought, wow, I think we could probably do this. We had an old, our old city hall and fire station. There wasn't really anything going in there. It was a beautiful old building. So uh, she went down and then she made a run with the Route 66 Association of Illinois to bring that, that um, display and then much, much more here to Pontiac. And it was uh, really embraced by the city manager and the uh, city council and they, I think it was about a year process and they uh, had to rehab the old firehouse because it was a mess. It was used for storage and all the old tin ceilings were all, you know, falling down. But, They've done a really great job of restoring an old building that at one point in the 1980s was actually slated for demolition. So now it is like the main tourist attraction here in Pontiac and it's grown into actually housing the Livingston County War Museum is on the third floor. Uh, several years ago we got uh, some grant money and we put in an elevator to connect the two sides from the old city hall side to the um, fire station. And then there's a, a new exhibit in there that opened a, a year and a half ago called Life in the 1940s. And it's a complete house, uh, all the furnishings of a, of a standard home in the 1940s. There's a newspaper collection, uh, a reproduction of the stage door canteen. And uh, aside from the 1940s, there's a little section in there with a 1960s era radio station that we can actually do some live broadcasting from. And we've actually done this this past year. We had a group from the UK come over and they did a Route 66 radio tour. And we had the maiden voyage of the uh, radio station there. So it's really a great use, reuse of a very old building and now it's the center point of our tourism. Tour guide Jim Jones, a Pontiac native, says the museum is more than just a place to look at old stuff. What makes our museum unique is that we try to personify the individuals that have made 66 such an interesting place. We have a licensed display around the corner over here from a family here in Pontiac, 1912 to 1984. 73 years, all from the same family. And they're beautiful. Some of them look like they've never been on a car. I don't think they're ever exposed to the weather. And then there's license plates from 19. 43 to 1948 during World War II were, because of the scarcity of steel, were made of a fiberboard. A major component of that fiberboard was soybean meal. Now when I was working in my dad's garage in Odell, uh, in December when the new plates would come out, our customers come in and I'd change their license for them. Notice that a lot of those fiberboard plates had the corners worn off. So I started asking questions. Turns out they were farmers, and the cattle were nibbling on the license plate for the soybean flavor. <laughs> but it, it, those are the kind of stories that make it interesting to be in here. We have a display upstairs, uh, a couple from Dwight, no, no, excuse me, Kankakee, brought it down two years ago, and being, uh, more 66 oriented than uh, life in the 40s because I lived through it. Uh, I was not in favor of it, but it is a delightful display. It's like going back to grandma's house. Now, it'd be like going back to your great grandmother's house. It's a four room apartment with all the furnishings, everything you'd expect to see at grandma's house. And then in the back upstairs on the second floor is a uh, a, a simulation of a World War II USO bandstand. The instruments sitting on the chairs like the musicians have just taken off for a, uh, a break and we're, we're playing uh, good music. Glenn Miller, Benny Goodman, you know, Tommy Dorsey. That's the kind of music you hear upstairs. The museum also features two displays dedicated to a well-known Route 66 figure. 
Have you seen the movie Cars? Do you remember Fillmore? This yellow van back here was the uh, inspiration for Fillmore. Bob Waldmeyer, who is now deceased, was the uh, lovingly known as the Route 66 hippie artist. He created that mural on the wall over there and uh, he traveled Route 66 and uh, did artwork. That's the way he supported his lifestyle uh, was painting, drawing, and selling his artwork. He had uh, this. Uh, Pixar came to him and wanted to use Waldmeyer instead of Fillmore. And Fillmore was not thought of. It was going to, originally going to be Waldmeyer. Uh, they gave Bob a contract. Uh, there was a, a supposedly a sum of a large sum of money that was going to be paid to him to use his name and the band in the movie. He found out when he read the contract that they were going to have a uh, miniature Waldmeyers in Happy Meals at McDonald's. Bob was a vegetarian. Tore up the check that they sent him and sent it back to us. No, I'm not interested. And we're talking a substantial amount of money. So anyway, he was true to his cause all the way through his life. In the back parking lot, we have the Waldmeyer Road Yacht. Now, this is a 1966 Chevrolet school bus that Bob bought in Grants, New Mexico and brought it back to his family farm near Springfield and converted it. Cut a big chunk out of the roof of it, added a second layer to it, which was his bedroom up above. It's really quite unique. Jim says the goal for the museum, and really for Pontiac, is to make everyone feel welcome. And everyone, at least in Pontiac terms, is a visitor. And each year, those visitors number in the thousands and are from all over the world. To quote some of our international visitors, they will come to the United States, they will see our large cities, and they're just like their large cities back home, whether Australia, Japan, Europe, South Africa. It's, in their words, an impersonal world. They get 100 miles from Chicago and they found that, find this beautiful little museum in Pontiac, Illinois. And we have old geezers like myself who will greet them and tell them stories and try to become their friend, and we do. They walk down the sidewalks in Pontiac and people will greet them. We don't know them from Adam, but we know they're not from Pontiac. We want them to feel welcome. And that's what we do. And they do that in a number of ways, whether through using their language, offering helpful smartphone applications, or using physical guides between the city's attractions. Anytime, any day that you come into Pontiac, you're going to meet somebody from another country. We have to date uh, recorded about 84 different countries that have stopped in here and not only put a pin in the, the map, but signed our guest books. So we were really looking for people that would like to come and meet people from all over the world. And if you speak a different language, that would help as well, because there's just a whole lot of languages that we can't, <laughs> can't speak. Uh, we do use a translator app, so we, all the museums do have a, a tablet that they have an app on that they can help try to, to at least make a friendly greeting to somebody who doesn't speak our language. And then we've also put footprints on the ground, so the blue footprints go from museum to museum. So we can usually tell a visitor, even if they don't speak English, to follow the blue footprints and they'll get from museum to museum. Then we have red footprints and those are the ones that if you wanted to do a walking tour of all of our murals and I think we're about 22, 23 murals now. The town's murals began with a local family of sign painters who did this Route 66 mural. From there, efforts began to bring in an artist group known as the Wall Dogs. One of the big deciding factors was we, we painted the mural the 66 mural behind us and uh, when the you know townspeople saw what that did to this area back here um, it kind of made everyone want to pursue more of that. So. 
it was amazing because I we weren't done painting it and people were lining up to stand in front of it. And we uh, we had done a couple other wild dog meets. Um, we were at the very first one, and we wanted to have the wild dogs come here to town. And it actually took a long time for us to convince everyone with town to have them come here, and then uh, we did get everyone. Uh, we had a about a year and a half. Yeah, we uh, met for about a year and a half beforehand, getting it all ready. Yeah. And we met once a month till... With city officials, yeah. and we had like a, a task force, I guess, that uh, put the thing together, and everyone came to town, and we're, we're doing good. Over the course of just a few days, the Wall Dogs painted 18 murals throughout the downtown area, leading the beginning of what would be a revitalization. There's been a lot of different things that have gone on um, to help kind of revitalize the downtown area, um, but that was definitely a piece of the puzzle, um, bigger piece, I think. I think it started it where people were starting to look. Well, before the murals came, if you wanted to have a mural on your building, you had to fix the building up. It had to look nice, it had to be repainted. So that kind of got people going, well, then maybe I should redo my, you know. And the city made an agreement with them that um, if they would do the renovations, there's a half down that they could get out of that too. So um, what do they call them? Facade grants. Yeah. You can get a facade grant and get half of the money that you're going to use to do that up front to, to do the work. So that helped people. <laughs> Before the murals came here, this was actually I mean, it was just a, a parking lot that really there wasn't anything that went on back here. And it was kind of nasty. <laughs> it, there, there was like garbage back here and stuff. So I mean, this area especially was really changed by having the murals back here because it, it, this was like one of the areas in town that you would never take someone to see before. And now it's a, a you know, it's a centerpiece of the town. and. Uh, it's where like tourist groups come by here they park all in front of the mural and they take pictures in front of the other murals and you know this is like a center of town now where as before the murals it, it was a place you avoided. The murals also sparked the idea for a one-of-a-kind museum in honor of the group that painted them. Well, the city decided to create this museum to honor the wild dogs after we had our uh, wild dog event here in 2009. And this museum was created in 2010. The Diaz family was very instrumental in that. To the best of our knowledge, this is the only museum in the whole entire world do uh, dedicated to, the, um, to murals and sign art. We are ever-changing. We're constantly um, changing our exhibits around, working on new exhibits, and so it's always different every time you come in. The museum has artifacts and memorabilia donated or on loan from wall dog painters and artists all over the world. The museum also houses a few special exhibits. multiple exhibits in here. So um, we have the exhibit all the way in the back by Tang Dong Bai, which is an invisible art exhibit. We also have the gilding exhibit, but then really people just come in here wondering what a wall dog is. And so it's great to be able to tell the story of the wall dogs to people. The exhibits at the Wall Dog Museum are ever-changing, just like those of its neighbor museum, the Pontiac Oakland Automobile Museum and Resource Center. This museum features owner Tim Dye's collection. Cars were obviously made in Pontiac, Michigan, which was in Oakland County. Uh, the Oakland car was the first uh, of the car brands. And um, that area is not some place that would be really conducive to holding the, hosting the museum at this point. So when Tim came through here and saw that what we had going on, and it was just a, it was a perfect blend, and that's how a lot of things have happened here. We haven't sought the things that have happened, but we've really embarked on the opportunities once they've been pre presented to us. And you know, the mayor says that even if the name of our town wasn't Pontiac, we may have changed it just to get the Pontiac Oakland Car Museum to come here. So it's really been a perfect blend. Tim and Penny Dye from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. 
Uh, Tim is known as the ultimate collector. Uh, if you turn around and see his uh, library, he has every manual pretty much ever made for any Pontiac or Oakland car. And Tim has been collecting <laughs> for somewhere near uh, 35 years or whatever it's been. His first car was a Pontiac. He fell in love with it. He started the first Pontiac uh, meet and there was only 13 people there, but uh, he printed the brochures for it. He went and got the insurance for the conv their little meet and he, he is just Mr. Pontiac. And when I, I went out to his uh, home in Oklahoma and saw his collection, in every room we went into it was full of Pontiac memorabilia. And so he, he just absolutely loves Pontiac, the, the car hobby. And he knows as much about a Pontiac car as anybody you'll ever meet. And the Oakland. The Oakland preceded the Pontiac, made in, made in the same place. But uh, T Tim is a resource for many, many people, uh, people that are rebuilding, say, a 1934 Pontiac, and they can't figure out the carburetor. He has all the books for that. More so, he knows it pretty much in his head, what everything is. And so it, it's a resource center, but it, it turned out to be a beautiful uh, museum uh, where people can come enjoy uh, cars from the very first 1926 Pontiac to the very latest 2010 Pontiac Solstice that used to sit right behind me here. So he, he continually rotates. He has, we have cars in storage all over our city. And for instance, the two GTOs sitting behind me just moved in here last week, this whole exhibit. Tim is very good at planning exhibits, as you'll see when you uh, go around. Uh, he, he just doesn't have cars sitting here. He, there's something special about every car here, and then he creates the exhibit to uh, match, match the car. Exhibits like his oil can collection and even a 1964 Pontiac station wagon camping exhibit. This one that you'll see here has the curtains in the back windows. It's got the uh, Coleman grill setting up next to it. But, but behind the whole thing is a full wall uh, scene of Starve Rock State Park. And that's where, again, the revenge uh, for Chief Pontiac's death took place was at Starve Rock State Park. So, so when, when Tim sets up an exhibit, again, it's not just a car. <laughs> it's, uh, it's got a story to it. Tim has written a book coinciding with the title he's been given called The Ultimate Collector, and he's one Pontiac says they're glad to have. Pontiac car was made in Pontiac, Michigan. Uh, when Tim Dye, who was the owner of this uh, museum, uh, found out about Pontiac, Illinois, and its association with Chief Pontiac, he chose to move the museum here instead of Pontiac, Michigan. Uh, one, Pontiac, Michigan's going through some major struggles, but two, we already have tens of thousands of visitors from around the world coming here, being along Route 66, and it was just a perfect fit because it's all transportation related, Route 66, the automobile. So it, it was a good fit for him and he fell in love with our city and we worked out a deal where within about a six month period he had his museum moved here and opened. The museum is in a former department store and is one of the many success stories the city has to share about reusing and upgrading what they already have. And it's that spirit that's taken Pontiac from place to destination over the years. At night, you never saw people around our city walking around. Now, every single night, you'll see people outside taking pictures, uh, coming through from around the world, just walking around. And you'll see our residents walking around, enjoying the, the little cars on the street corner. And the kids love those. And the, uh, the murals on the walls. It, it really just, the whole project just fit together. Uh, first it was the 66 Museum, well that, that kind of did okay. Uh, then it was the murals and that really boosted things up. Then it was the mural museum, then it was the car museum. And so you put it all together and it just all fits really, really well. And because of that, we have tens of thousands of visitors here all the time. There really is something here for everybody. So what's next for Pontiac? We don't know, for sure. <laughs> we have a lot of things in the works. Uh, as you know, we're working with the Society of Gilders. Uh, they have an exhibit that's already in storage here. Uh, that is gonna be a very, very nice exhibit. Uh, we're working with them. They're, they're anxious to get going so that they can have their uh, annual conventions here, so that they can teach classes here in gilding. Uh, Gold Leaf, uh, it's better known as. And so we're working on that. Uh, we, we have, I just got another email this morning about another business that's getting ready to open here in town. So it, it has really revitalized our downtown. 
and the, the people here have worked so hard. We have a very, very good team of people to make this happen. If you'd like to purchase a copy of any Heartland Highways program, contact us at 1-877-727-9348 during regular business hours. You can also visit our online store at weiu.net or mail in your order with payment to the address on your screen. DVDs are available for $25 each. Visa, MasterCard, Discover, or American Express are accepted. Just let us know what show you're interested in by mentioning the story name or person featured in the show. That wraps up this season of Heartland Highways. As always, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you out there on the Heartland Highways where every mile is an adventure. Heartland Highways is made possible in part by EIU's Academy of Lifelong Learning, providing all community members an outlet for their educational, social, and creative pursuits. Opportunities to learn new skills, engage in topics of interest, and explore new areas of learning. Available for people of all ages. More information available at 581-5114.